Hi everybody, this is Agnesa from No Sediment and today let's talk and taste differences between Syrah and Shiraz. I believe Syrah is becoming an increasingly popular red grape variety nowadays. And interestingly, with a few exceptions, it still makes quite affordable yet highly exciting wines. However, sometimes I get the question, what is the difference between Syrah and Shiraz? Are they the same grape coming from different terroirs or are they completely different grape varieties? So let's find out and finish it with a nice tasting. Syrah is a red grape variety closely linked with Northern Rhone wine region in France. A relatively recent DNA testing has confirmed that it is an offspring of two old Rhone grape varieties, establishing that its home is indeed Rhone Valley. And according to historical records, it was James Busby who introduced Syrah to Australia in the early 19th century, where it is now known as Shiraz and is the key red grape variety. Australia is also proud for the oldest Shiraz vineyards in the world, some dating back to the 19th century. So indeed, it is the same grape variety. However, under different growing conditions and winemaking techniques, it can show different characteristics. As discussed, Syrah or Shiraz can be found in France and Australia. In the 1990s, it became increasingly popular in the United States, driven by winemakers known as the Rhone Rangers. But I can safely say that today Syrah or Shiraz is an international grape variety. It is widely grown with great examples produced in New Zealand, South Africa and Chile. Despite having many native grape varieties on their own, Italians also make amazing Syrah wines, so do winemakers in Portugal. Interestingly, despite some claims that Syrah is more associated with Europe and Shiraz is more associated with Australia, it is not always the case. We can find wines labeled as Shiraz from France and we most certainly can find wines labeled as Syrah outside of Europe. Since these two names tend to deliver significantly different wine styles, I see it as a way to inform consumer of the potential style of the wine. Wines labeled as Shiraz will likely resemble the well-recognized Australian examples, while wines labeled as Syrah will be closer in style to those from the Northern Rhone. Some people find that Syrah shares similarities with the famous Bordeaux grape varieties because it also delivers quite full-bodied and dense wines. However, for me, it seems to have completely different profile. While the tannins are elevated, they almost always feel softer, more rounded and mouth coating in the gentlest way possible. Flavor-wise, Syrah shows range of blue and black berries, often accompanied by notes of black pepper and leather, showing inviting spicy character. Despite its dense fruit profile, I always feel something earthy, not necessarily funky, but almost animal-like, especially in wines with significant bottle age. The greatest examples of Shiraz tend to be highly dense and rich without losing their freshness or energy. They have a riper fruit profile, more blueberry, sweet, wildberry driven. One distinctly different characteristic of the Shiraz style for me is the tannin. They often feel riper, almost melted into the wine, more playful and suggesting rather than adding structure. And indeed, I recently spoke with one wine expert who was determined that Australians do not like tannins, which is why their wines show mellower and softer tannin structure. Maybe those from Australia watching can comment whether or not it's really the case. Shiraz is often blended with other Rhone varieties such as Grenache and Murviedre. And it is not uncommon to see it blended with even white grape varieties like Viognier, which can make wines feel lighter and add some floral character. However, today I want to focus on pure Syrah wines. While I might not always be certain if the wine truly is a 100% Syrah, I did my best to source three great examples. One in the style of Syrah, one in the style of Shiraz and one that is neither from Australia nor France, but states Syrah on the label. 
So let's taste the wines and as always these were poured by my cameraman so I don't know which one is which. Wine number one. It is just so intense on the nose and there's ripe fruit profile so it shows blackberries and blueberries and uh, ripe black cherries but there's a lot of smokiness, toastiness to it, some vanilla clove and cigar box. It is safe to say that this wine has seen some oak. Hmm. However, color-wise, it is not as dense or rich as sometimes Syrah wines can be. Um, but let's taste it. So this is what I was talking about, the mouth coating, yet very gentle, soft tannin structure. I feel the tannins and they are really playful and kind of flirting a little bit, but in no way are they aggressive or, or, or sticky or, or kind of punching you. There is beautiful fruit presence on the palate as well. I don't think this wine shows the really ripe and kind of almost jammy fruit profile that I would maybe expect from Australia. Um, however, it also does not have the structure and maybe the acidity that I would expect from European examples. And when I say European examples, I of course naturally think of Northern Rhone uh, in majority of cases. So it seems to be made in that kind of Northern Rhone style, but climate and terroir has put its mark on it. Overall, I think this is beautiful, inviting and flirtatious wine that I just love in my glass. And despite it having quite prominent oak on the nose and the palate, the fruit is actually more persistent on the palate and I just enjoy it and you will want to have another glass. So I will give this wine 93 points. Let's move to wine number two. Oh, wow. It is black. It is black in color. I cannot see through. And that richness and that concentration of the fruit, guys, this must be Australia. You know, it is filled with blackberries inside and it seems so fresh. It's just big, big wine on the nose. And I mean, it has a lot of sediment as well. You can just put this wine on the dough, bake it, and you will have blueberry crumble. Mm. And here in this very example, you can see the fruit is shining. It is really beautifully fruit driven. Let's taste it. And as I mentioned in the introduction, despite it showing off so big and opulent on the nose, on the palate, it actually has a lot of energy and is quite fresh. It shows a bit of that ripe red berry character as well on the aftertaste, not only black or blue fruit, also that kind of really ripe strawberry and raspberry, you know that you pick in the late uh, autumn. And here, actually, the tannin, I would say that the tannin level is a bit lower than for the wine number one. However, it is definitely not as mellow or as melted, maybe as I explained in the beginning. It does show structure, but it is not as persistent as with wine number one. It starts to show some eucalyptus, some garig on the nose, because on the first nose I just felt only fruit, which is great for the wine. Hmm. And it is kind of starting to open up some layers. Absolutely amazing. I like this wine. Beautiful tannin, beautiful structure. I will give it 95 points. Let's move to wine number three. Hmm. This is the shyest of the three. It is not that it's neutral, but you have to catch it, you have to talk with it, you have to meditate with it. But the nose of those berries, of those fruits, it just seems so delicate. Definitely not showing off, kind of just a shadow of a beautiful woman passing by. Mm. Lovely nose. 
and it is so inviting it is kind of taking you into its web I love it it's also driven by blueberries blackberries but really in the most delicate way I feel some floral characteristic as well but not something white more like lilac or uh, or uh, orange blossom let's taste it this is the structure of the tannin that I was talking about when I was mentioning Syrah from Northern Rhone. The tannin here is finely grained, mouth coating, elevated and definitely longer lasting on the palate. And then comes the acidity. It is almost like not necessarily sour cherry but red cherry driven. It is just so long flavor wise absolutely beautiful and stunning wine and to be honest i think this wine is a bit closed at the moment it is beautiful and you can feel the energy and the magnificence in this wine but it seems that there is so much more to offer maybe in near future and it's like then like an onion you have to peel the layers off to kind of come to the real to the real get to know the real wine I love this wine. It is just so elegant. However, it does show muscle and it does show character. It's not something you just, you know, drink and forget. It's, it, it kind of stays into your mind. I will give this wine 96 points and I think it can age for another 10, 15 years easily. So I will stick to my initial judgment and I think that wine number one is Syrah labeled outside from Europe and outside from Australia. I think that wine number two is Shiraz from Australia and wine number three is classic example of Northern Rhone. Shall we reveal? Okay, so wine, wine number one. So it is indeed Kiermont and I chose Syrah from Stellenbosch. This is very well regarded and absolutely amazing estate, regularly receiving high marks from the wine enthusiasts and wine critics and I gave it 93 points, I think. And this is actually 2016 vintage, so it has some age on it uh, already. So wine number two, I said it was Shiraz. And of course it is Penfold's Bin 150 Marananga Shiraz from Barossa Valley. And please note that this is 2010 vintage and on the nose, it did not show a lot of age. It felt really young, really fresh, energetic, if you remember what I said about it. And I gave it 95 points. It is 14 years old, amazing. And it still would have lived 10 more, I guess. So let's move to wine number three, which naturally makes it example from Northern Rhone. Let's just check where from specifically. And it is one of the top producers from Cornas, Frank Balthazar, from their uh, bottling Chayot. And if I'm not mistaken, this is made from really old plot with vines being around 95, 97 years old. That's impressive. Not a lot of human beings can live as long. And it was just absolutely beautiful wine. And uh, I gave it 96 points. And as my mentors and teachers in the Institute of Masters of Wine often say, structure never lies. And here, I think within these three examples, it was really the structure that helped me to determine where these wines are really coming from. So the tannins and the acidity. Uh, by the way, which one thing that I just realized, I did not mention alcohol in any of these wines because it was just not standing out. It was really beautifully integrated. Let me know in the comments if you like Sera just as much as I do. And if you do, which is your favorite style? And I suggest continuing your YouTube session with this video next.